Setting up a 100 watt solar panel kit is not hard. You might be intimidated when you first see the diagram that comes with your kit, but if you look closely, you'll see it consists of four main parts with three connections. So this whole video is just gonna consist of us making those three connections. You can definitely do it, even if you're a complete beginner to DIY solar. So let's just jump right in. Step one for virtually every 100 watt kit is connecting the charge controller to the battery, okay? So what do you need for this step? You need a screwdriver, and you also need the battery cables, which are sometimes called tray cables. They look like this. They have ring terminals on one end, and then they have stripped wire on the other end. Then you need to locate the battery terminals on the charge controller. So look at your charge controller and look for the terminals that have a battery icon or the letters BAT or BATT next to them. Those are your battery terminals. So my charge controller has a battery icon and then one terminal is labeled with a plus sign and one is labeled with a minus sign. Obviously the, the plus sign indicates the positive battery terminal, okay? So we know which terminal we're starting with. And then you're gonna pick the positive battery cable. So if your battery cables are, are color coordinated red and black, then just pick the red cable. If yours are both black like mine, then just arbitrarily pick one of the cables. And then we are going to insert the strip wire end into the positive battery terminal. So unscrew the terminal with your screwdriver if it isn't already unscrewed. I'll just do that right quickly. And then take the stripped wire end of your positive battery cable and just stick it into the terminal and then use your screwdriver to screw it shut. And I like to really tighten it because these wires can, you know, they have a tendency to slip out. So now I've got the positive battery cable in the positive battery terminal on the charge controller. And next, I'm gonna grab the ring connector or the ring terminal as it's also called. And then I'm gonna find the positive battery terminal on my battery. How do we find that? It's very easy. You look for the red one, the one that's color coded red uh, and has a plus sign next to it. So this one is my positive terminal. This one is my negative terminal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna thread this ring onto the bolt on this terminal. But before moving on, consider wearing some gloves and safety glasses for safety reasons, as well as, as well as for peace of mind. Sparks can happen and we'll see one later on in this video. So I'm gonna grab uh, some safety glasses and just some basic work gloves and put these on. Now we're gonna unscrew the bolt on this battery. So if yours has a plastic cap, just pull it off and then use your screwdriver or a ratchet if you have one to unscrew the battery terminal. Might actually move this, over, move this a little closer. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ring connector from our positive battery cable and we are gonna thread it onto the battery's bolt. And then we're just gonna screw the bolt back on to the battery. But wait, are you using an inverter? If you are, which I'm sure a lot of you are, then inverters typically have two types of connectors on them. They'll either have ring connectors or they'll have alligator clips. If your inverter has ring connectors, then you are gonna want to thread the positive inverter connector onto this battery. So I just went and grabbed a small 150 watt inverter that I have. And if we look at the connectors, we can see what I'm talking about. So these are also ring connectors. And to save yourself a lot of time and hassle later on, just go ahead and if this is the kind of connector your inverter has, then thread the positive one onto the bolt as well. So if you look, it's kind of hard to see and kind of hard to hold, but on this bolt, I've threaded on the positive battery cable and the positive inverter wire. If your inverter has alligator clips, then you do not need to do this. You can worry about this later, which we'll talk about. So I'm gonna now screw this on to the battery terminal. So at this point, our positive battery cable is connected from charge controller to battery. We're gonna repeat that process with the negative battery cable. So locate the negative battery terminal on the charge controller. In my case, it's uh, the one next to the battery icon with a minus sign. And then locate your negative battery terminal on your battery. And mine has a little cap, 
which again, I can just uh, remove. Once again, I'm gonna use my screwdriver to unscrew the negative battery terminal if it isn't already. Then I'm gonna insert the stripped wire end from my negative battery cable. I'm gonna kind of hold it in there and then I'm going to use my screwdriver to tightly uh, screw the terminal shut. And once that's done, you can always give it a little tug test, make sure that the uh, cables are indeed in there securely. And then I'm going to unscrew uh, the bolt on my negative battery terminal. And now what I'm gonna do is what I call getting the spark out. Basically there are components inside the charge controller that will charge up once we complete the connection to the battery. So what that means is once we touch this terminal to our negative battery terminal, there might be a small spark. It's not dangerous uh, and it happens, it doesn't happen every time, but just in order to basically get that out of the way so it's not startling, I like to just take the negative terminal and touch it to the battery terminal. Okay, so there wasn't a spark this time, but yours might spark. And then once it's touched, it basically the internal components have charged and then we can take it and continue threading it on to the bolt like we did with the last one. And once again, if you have an inverter, you can do the same with its negative cable, touch it. Uh, in this case, once again, no spark, but we will see a relatively big spark later on in this video. On this negative battery bolt, I have the negative um, battery cable and the negative inverter cable. And then going to, so I got that bolt on there and now I'm gonna use my screwdriver to finish off the job. So now our battery and our charge controller are connected. And how do you know? The lights will light up, telling you that indeed the charge controller is on. And if your charge controller has a screen, then the screen should turn on and it will start just telling you some system specs like battery voltage. There's one last thing we need to do, which is we need to select our battery type on our charge controller. Every charge controller does this a little differently, but you have to tell it what type of battery you're using. In my case, I'm using a lithium iron phosphate battery. So I'm gonna tell my charge controller that I'm using a lithium battery and it's already set to lithium, but I'm gonna show you how to change it on this charge controller in case you're using it. I just hold down this button for like seven or 10 seconds until the uh, blue button starts blinking. Now that it's blinking, I just press the button to you know, toggle between different battery options. And I'm again, I'm just gonna go back to blue because I'm using a lithium battery. Now that it's blinking blue, I just press and hold that same button again for about seven or 10 seconds until it stays solid blue. Okay, so now I've told my charge controller which kind of battery I'm using. So now step one is done and we've completed our first connection of charge controller and battery. The good news is it only gets easier from here on out. So let's just move right on to step two. The second connection is connecting the solar panel to the charge controller. What you need for this one, you need once again, your screwdriver, and then you need the solar adapter cables, which are these ones here. They have these connectors on the end, which are called MC4 connectors. And then um, at the other end, they are once again, you know, stripped wire, which is what we'll be connecting uh, to the charge controller. First, we're gonna wanna locate the positive cable on the solar panel. Quick safety tip is if you're outside, uh, throw a towel over your solar panel or flip it over. I, su I suggest flipping it over because it's just easier to access the cables that way and uh, doing that stops it from generating most of its power. So I'm gonna flip it over right quick to get easier access to the cables on the back. With it flipped over, you're gonna wanna locate the positive solar cable, which uh, they should be marked. Your cables should be marked. You know, you can probably see this one has a, a red plus sign and this cable has a negative minus sign. So this is obviously the positive cable also every uh, solar panel I've ever used, the male MC4 connector, which is this one, is on the positive wire. So that's another quick way of, of telling. And then we're gonna find the positive solar adapter cable, which, you know, once again, yours might be color-coded red and black, mine are both black. So I'm gonna pick the one with 
oh my gosh, with the female MC4 connector on it. And then to connect it, all I have to do is just push the connectors together until I hear a little click. And now I have uh, this whole wire, um, which connects to the solar panel and then a stripped end on one end. And we know what to do here. We locate the positive solar terminal on the charge controller. So look for a solar panel icon or a sun or the letters PV. That tells you uh, which terminals are the solar terminals. PV module is another way of saying solar panel. So that's what that's referring to. And then find the positive one. So for me, that's this one here with a plus sign next to it. And then we're gonna insert the stripped wire end um, like we did with the battery cable. So unscrew it if you need to, and then just stick it in there and you know, kind of hold it steady while you use your screwdriver to screw the terminal tightly shut. So now I've got the positive solar panel cable connected to the positive solar terminal on the charge controller. Hey, uh, quick question. What is this little black thing between the solar panel and the charge controller on my diagram? That is actually a fuse and they're sometimes included in the wiring diagrams that come with some of these kits, but they're not included in the kits themselves, which is kind of funny. It is a safety best practice to fuse your system at certain points, but it's not necessary for your system to work properly. So I'm not gonna touch on fusing in this video because they're left out of every 100 watt kit I've ever seen. So moving on. Now we are just gonna repeat that process for the negative solar panel cable. So grab the negative solar panel cable, and then you're gonna grab the negative solar adapter cable, which is the one with the male MC4 connector on it. And I'm just going to connect these like I did before. Find the stripped wire end. Then I'm gonna find, once again, the negative solar terminal on the charge controller and screw this in there. And so now the solar panel is connected to the charge controller. And for the magic to happen, we are actually gonna take the solar panel outside and put it in a sunny spot. Even if it's not that sunny, or in my case, it's just later in the evening, you'll probably still see what we're about to see. So put your solar panel outside if you haven't already, then come back inside and look at your charge controller. As you'll see, mine has a light that has started blinking. It's the PV light, PV refers to solar in this case. And for this charge controller, a blinking PV light means that everything is properly connected and the solar panel is safely charging the battery. The second connection is done. We just have one more to go. The third and final connection is connecting the inverter to the battery, which some of you already did in step one. So if you did that, you can just go ahead and plug in a device to see if you connected everything properly. So I have a little lamp here. I'm plugging it into the small inverter I connected um, when I was connecting the battery. Some inverters have a switch, so you might need to go and flip it on. Mine does not, so I'm just gonna turn on the lamp. There, so. <laughs> This inverter is properly connected and we know it's working. If you did not connect your inverter in step one, then it's time to do it now. This is a 2000 watt inverter and it does not have ring connectors, it has alligator clips. So I just have to clip these to the correct battery terminal. Obviously positive to positive, negative to negative. I'm gonna start with the positive cables. So I just have to clip them to the battery terminal. The way I like to do it, so I like to, with this one, I like to do one sideways like this, grab the other one and peel back these plastic parts and uh, clip the second one that way. And then I just repeat the process for the black ones uh, on the negative battery terminal. But <laughs> warning, I'm laughing because there's about to be a spark. This is a big inverter and so when I complete the connection by touching these alligator clips to the battery terminal, there will be a spark. And it always just startles me a little bit, uh, but fair warning. Um, so I'm just gonna touch it to sort of get the spark out as we did before. Oh shit. 
Okay, well that was anticlimactic, <laughs> but usually there's a big spark. So I'm just going to connect them to the terminals the way that I did before. So now this inverter is connected to the battery. The outlet is actually on the back. So I'm gonna flip the switch and then I'm going to uh, connect my lamp and turn it on and we'll see if it's working. Nice. Something important is if you ever disconnect this setup, you know, like let's say you're just doing this inside to learn how to do it. Now you're gonna take it apart and reconnect everything outside. You wanna disconnect the solar panel from the charge controller first. If you disconnect the battery from the charge controller first, you can damage the charge controller, especially these cheaper charge controllers. But guys, if you entered this video as a complete beginner, uh, you now have a working solar panel kit or solar panel setup. And a lot of what you learned are sort of foundational skills in DIY solar. If you have questions about this particular setup, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer as many of the questions as possible. But that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.